Good afternoon. Uh, welcome once again for the lesson of uh, of, uh, of of this time. I want us to proceed from what you are doing in the morning. It is a continuation of the 200 questions that are likely to be attested in an exam. If you can go through your screen, you see what I've projected here. I don't want to waste any time. Please follow me. Let's work together so that we can answer some questions here. This is a special dedication to grade 6 learners, uh, to grade 7 learners who are planning to be next year candidates, and also the council candidates of this year. So if you can go through what I have projected and uh, I want us to go through together, it is saying that um, uh, the main reason for establishment of the Swan High Dam, the Swan High Dam being among the main uh, river projects that were started in Africa by our forefathers in the nation, uh, had uh, a main reason why it was established. A Swan High Dam, it is found on River Nile in Egypt or in Misri. It was started uh, purposely to increase uh, what he called food production through irrigation farming. So a question comes, the main reason for establishment of the Swan High Dam on River Nile in Egypt was to provide water for irrigation. The main problem facing river projects in Africa is siltation of dams. What is siltation? We have the, the, the eroded soil, the silty eroded soil that is being deposited in the dam. This is what we call the siltation. So the main challenge facing the multi-purpose river projects. Remember early we had said that um, we have three or four. We have uh, the Volta River scheme uh, on River Volta. We have the, the Seven Fox River scheme on River Tana in Kenya and the Volta in, Uga in, in Ghana. And uh, River uh, Zambezi, we have the Kareba projects in River Zambezi along the Zambe Zimbabwe border. The, so the three, the Volta, the Seven Fox River schemes in Kenya, and the, and the, the Kareba projects were started mainly to produce water from uh, 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 production of hydrated electric power. But as soon as he dam, as you can see in question number uh, 74, it was started purposely to increase what you call uh, food production or to put more land into use, all for irrigation farming. And it was started by Gamel Abdul Nasil of Egypt. The Commonwealth Games are held after every four years. And the main reason why we have these Commonwealth Games, it is to promote unity, to promote sanity in our political affairs among the countries that are former uh, British uh, members, colonial mem members. So we do come together as the nations that were under British uh, to promote what you call oneness, and uh, try to remember the issue of um, uh, uh, bringing uh, together um, uh, sanity and uh, understanding among other issues. Remember, <clears throat> before, the members of Commonwealth were all former colonies of the Britain. But nowadays, the Commonwealth uh, uh, requirement is that all countries now in Africa, they are free, whether you are connected by the British or not, they are free to join the Commonwealth. We say that um, the Commonwealth is an international cooperation body that consists of the former British colonies. NB, none former colonies may apply to get the membership, uh, an example we know of Mozambique. The headquarters of the United Nations are founded in New York. And remember the UN was, it was founded in 1945 to promote sanity, to promote long-lasting peace, to put to an end of the Second World War, to deal with the development issues, to restore refugees, to provide food for the displaced members, to do research in terms of medicine and the diseases in the, in the world, to promote development generally and to improve the living standards of members in the, in, the, in, the, in the whole world. The main export from Somalia can also be tested the main export products from Somalia, we have bananas and livestock products. We have bananas and livestock products. They can answer this one. In most cases, learners know that the banana growing in Uganda, we have maize growing in Kenya, maize growing in Tanzania, but we don't know the main products that we get from Somalia. Bananas undergrown and irrigation, of course, and livestock products. The largest swamp in Africa is found in Kovango. It is Kovango, Kovango in Botswana. Botswana is from the southern part of Africa. So the largest swamp is um, Okavango in Botswana. The deepest lake, of course, in Africa is Tanganyika. We can say the deepest lake and the longest lake in Africa uh, is Tanganyika. The most common question again, the first, the safest place to cross a busy road 
uh, at the is at the footy bridge. We can say we have what you call the footy bridge. Malanas, we have given an alternative that where where there are traffic lights because on the traffic lights they are being led. You know what is supposed to be done. But uh, in the most cases, when we use what you call we cross where we have the separate crossing, sometimes we can cross through the separate crossing. But make sure that um, the road is not busy. Remember here the question is, a safest place to cross a very busy road. A busy road is a highway. It is a, a footy bridge. We can say footy bridge. All we have the underground tunnels or where we have the traffic lights. Uh, Lake Gambi, Shakabobo, you know, these are the Oxford lakes that we have in Africa. We have the Gambi, we have Shakabobo, we have Ibilisa, Manzala, Penabori, and Utange are examples of the Oxford lakes. Ghana, Tanzania, Uganda, and the Senegal gained independence through peaceful constitutional or diplomatic ways. So you might be asking a simple question maybe. Three of the foreign countries gained, countries gained independence peacefully. Which one was not? We have Ghana, we have Uganda, we have Tanzania, we have Senegal. Remember, it came through formation of political parties and engaging the white men in a, a diplomatic way, constitutionally, or in a peaceful way. Then we have Kenya, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. They used what you call armed struggle. Armed struggle. These countries, we have Kenya. Kenyan supplied what you call armed struggle to gain what you call independence. So Kenya... Zimbabwe, Mozambique acquired their independence uh, through uh, the armed struggle. Armed struggle. Remember, armed struggle. We engaged the white men one on one. Ethiopia was never colonized. It had a very powerful Emperor Amel Kitu, who successfully resisted the Italian invasion in 1936. The so-called the, the Battle of Adowa. The Battle of Adowa in um, uh, 1936. We say we have the battle of uh, uh, Adowa, Adowa, the battle of Adowa of 1936. So Meneliki II, uh, Embara Meneliki II, succeeded to defeat the Italian invasion. Liberia was also not colonized. Remember, we have two countries in Africa, Ethiopia and Liberia, that were not colonized. Ethiopia had strong leaders and uh, leadership, and also Liberia was set aside as a home for freed slaves, and that's why it was not colonized. Somalia was colonized by the three European members. We have what you call the French people, the Britain, and the Italy. We have given a formula here. We say we have the FBI, the, Briti the French, the Britain, and the Italy. So Somalia had three colonial masters. The first country to gain independence in Africa was Egypt in 1922. 1922. And the last country to gain independence in Africa was not Namibia. Of course, it was 1994, South Africa, and later we had what he calls South Sudan in the year 2011, the year 2011. So the typing error in Namibia of 1990, and it was very wrong, the South Africa got independence in 1994. There before, there, there before, we had South Africa as the youngest nation in Africa. But now later, South Sudan joined when they gained independence in, 19, in 2011, 2011. We say that South Africa gained independence in 1994, but not, not free, not free. And in fact, we have said here, up to 1994 now when it was declared uh, full independent. So 19, 1934 to 1994, we were under the colonial rule in South Africa. The so-called the apartheid rule, the, res, the racial segregation, or racial discrimination was very high in South Africa. And when Nelson Mandela came in 1994 as the first democratically elected president of South Africa, he dealt with what he called apartheid rule in his cabinet and his executive by appointing members of all races into the government. And that's how Nelson Mandela dealt with what he called uh, the apartheid rule in South Africa. So the first democratic, democratically elected president of South, Af South Africa was Nelson Mandela of 19, of course, 1994. He ruled for only five years, one term. Then he retired voluntarily, being uh, the, uh, the, 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 the president among the presidents in Africa that retired voluntarily from active politics and uh, setting a good example. Of course, yeah, I can't remember, I can't uh, forget what he called uh, 
uh, the law police said the same of, of Senegal of 1980. Then we had uh, Julius Kambarage Nyerere from uh, from Tanzania or Tanganyika. Then uh, later we had uh, Nelson Mandela, of course, from uh, uh, South Africa. The African leaders who uh, retired voluntarily from active politics. We had uh, Leopold the Sede Seng of Senegal. Then we had uh, Julius Nyerere Mwalimu of Tanzania, Tanganyika, and uh, Nelson Mandela of South Africa, of course, in 1994, after ruling for only one term of five years and actively retired from politics. Ethiopia is led by the Prime Minister. Uh, in fact, also I remember something here. Yeah? We have what you call the head of a state in Swaziland, or Eswatin is the king. So we have Swaziland or Eswatin, and also we have Morocco, countries in Africa that are under kingship. We have Morocco as a nation. Morocco has no presidency. Morocco has what you call the kingship. And also a Swatin or the Swatland, we are the king. The head of the government in Swatland was the prime minister, and this prime minister, of course, was appointed by the king. And the prime minister also assisted the king to appoint the council of ministers, the so-called Linkoko. The traditional government in Swatland was called in Tinkundla. Tinkundla is a traditional government, and the Limbandla here have all something here. It was a traditional system of governance, of course, in, um, in, in Swaziland. The king's title was Nguenyama Mend the Lion, and the king's mother was uh, Ndrofukazi Zeliwe, uh, the queen mother, or she elephant. The, the king's mother, he was called Ndrofukazi Zeliwe, the, uh, the, the elephant. The Swaziland council was also known as Lingoko, of course. This Swaziland council was led by the uh, uh, by the prime minister, uh, no, by was uh, appointed by the king through the the advisory from the prime minister. The prime meridian passes through the city of Accra in Ghana. This is a, a long theory that we have that influences time uh, uh, in, uh, in in the world. In the world. Then from there we have uh, the largest, the longest road in Africa is the Great North Road that starts from the Cape Town in South Africa. And it goes up to uh, to Egypt in Cairo. And the highway that connects Mombasa and Lagos to Nigeria, of course, is Trans-Saharan Highway. Uh, uh, highway good. Then the first Prime Minister of Kenya was Jomo Kenyatta. He was the first Prime Minister in 1964 when Kenya got a self internal role. And the Vice President, of course, the first one was Jeramoyo Ingo Dinga. The man who did it for a short period, then from there he resigned from the government. The maize growing in Kenya and Tanzania is important because it's a staple food, and in fact, you can be asked uh, the most places where we have maize growing in Kenya. We have Kitala in Kenya, or we can say Transnzoia district, and Tanzania, of course, boys and girls listening and watching this clip. We have uh, Arusha Moshi. The staple food in Uganda is bananas and the Homo erectus. Okay, so we have what you call the, um, uh, the evolution of human theory. We had the stages, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and uh, we had what you call Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, sapiens. Of course, I've seen this question, question number 107. In most exams, I've seen this question, they're asking how the Homo erectus were looking like. The Homo erectus are walked in an upright manner. Then they invented the fire and the speech, of course. We had the Homo habilis. Homo habilis were the hand human beings. They invented the thumb that they were using to hold things tightly and the making of course tools made of stones or we can call them all the one tools the homo erectus meant upright upright they worked in an upright way upright posture and these members they discovered what he called fire and the speech of course and the remains of early man are called the fossils and these fossils were discovered by a person by the name Lois Leakey Lois Leakey discovered the early man the remains of early man and uh, we had uh, Charles Darwin, Charles Darwin, the person who came with a book uh, that he, the one who did the discovery of what he called the, re, the, 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 the evolution of human theory. So Charles Darwin did the evolution theory and um, uh, Louis Leakey discovered uh, the first fossils, of course, in 1410. The old urban center, the old urban centers in Kenya, especially along the coast, they grew because of what he called trade. Most towns along the Kenyan coast grew because of the trade. When the Arabs came, remember the Sayyidi said, where the Arabs and the missionaries, the Arabs came and they started what he called trading activities along the coastal region of Eastern Africa. So most towns along Eastern Africa grew because of trade. 
The missionaries came mainly to Eastern Africa to spread Christianity, and uh, in the Kenyan national flag, the green color represents the vegetation of the land, the land of plenty, the land of plenty. Of course, we can't forget the black one for people, the red one, the blood which was shed during independence, and of course, white one now we, we are experiencing what you call peace in the nation. A nuclear family consists of father, mother, and children. The main problem facing wildlife is poaching. I said in the morning, this one, that the poaching, poaching is the main cause that affects what you call wildlife, poaching. Then we have tourism. We said in the morning we have tourism. The main challenge facing tourism in Africa, in Eastern Africa, and in Kenya and in the world nowadays is what you call insecurity. We can say insecurity or terrorism influencing or affecting what you call uh, the, the, the tourism activities. But wildlife, we have poaching. And the poaching is the legal killing of these wild animals. And the best way that we can prevent poaching is by teaching members of the public or to create awareness to understand the importance of these wild animals to the economy of the nation. The best method of catching fish in deep sea is trolling. Trolling is the best method. And I want to show uh, 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 a small picture here how the trolling method looks like. It has something like an edit this way. The trolling method, then we have a... We can have a, a ship somewhere. This is trolling method. The trolling method looks is a sketch of a trolling method. We say that is the best in deep sea, the trolling. Of course, the best method to catch fish that are found near the surface of the water in large numbers is past seining. And um, the best method of fish preservation in deep sea is refrigeration, of course. But you remember we have what you call refrigeration, we have canning, we have a uh, uh, sun drying. Sun drying is the most economical, the most economical. Then we have canning as the most expensive method of uh, uh, preserving fish. The main problem facing marine fishing is lack of capital to buy fishing. We can, in fact, we can say lack of inadequate capital, uh, lack of capital to buy fishing and the storage. Fishing, the modern fishing and the modern storage equipment lack of uh, uh, the lack of capital so the main problem facing marine fishing is a lack of capital to purchase what you call the modern fishing materials and also remember we have lake victoria victoria has a challenge that we say we have um, the water weeds the water weeds in lake victoria are known as the water here here sink and the fishing lake trucana we have transport activities the trucana fisheries those members who do fish in lake trucana they always experience tough challenges, especially when transportation, transporting of the fish products from the lake due, due to poor road network. We have Naivasha, of course, we have overfishing in Lake Naivasha. Uh, the most common means of uh, transport in Eastern Africa, of course, is the road and is the most the widely spread, the mo most, most used. They can also ask an exam, an exam that why road transport is the most used in Africa. We say that the most developed, it is widely spread uh, in the nation or in the continent. Uh, Lake Victoria in East Africa, of course, Kyoga, Uganda, Chad, in Chad, Benguelo, in Zambia, are all down warping lakes. We, I think we can call them down warping lakes. And sometimes we have seen in the book saying that these are depressional lakes, especially Kyoga, depressional lakes. In a subsistence farming, whereby we have what you call shifting cultivation and the bush following, the crops were grown purposely for, for food or for, for consumption under subsistence farming, whereby we had the shifting cultivation and also we had what you call uh, the under the, the, we had also what you call the bush following. So the shifting cultivation was done um, by it was done in traditional traditionally where we had large tracts of land and we remember that the land was communally owned the land was owned by the com community nobody had the land the title deed it was under the community and that's why members were able to shift from one place to another and remember under shifting cultivation we were doing the kind of uh, uh, of, of farming whereby a portion of land was to be cultivated until it loses its fertility. Then from there we shift uh, to a different ground. We allow what you call, uh, we allow what you call, uh, uh, we allow what you call um, uh, 
uh, following following the soil to regain its space of fertility. Then we come back. But under bush following, uh, under shifting we were not coming back. Sorry, under shifting we were not coming back. But the under bush following was somehow modern. That after doing some farming for quite some while, we leave the land to gain its fertility or following, then we come back. So bush following we were to come back after leaving a certain portion of land for quite some days. But um, under shifting we were leaving the place uh, uh, completely. Uh, cash crops were mainly grown for sale or commercial farming. In Kenya, the National Police Service is headed by the Inspector General. We have the Kenya Police Service. The, in Kenya, National Police Service. We have National Police Service and the Kenya Police Service. The National Police Service was under the Deputy Inspector General under what you call the uh, the the National Police Service. I want to show you something here that uh, might cause some problems. Eh? I want to know uh, how the the, 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 the the police was uh, how the police were organized. And who was in charge of uh, the National Police Service? I think we have the National Police Service and the Kenya Police Service so that we can know who was in charge of what. But also, you can be asked about what you call the main work of the Kenya Police. Of course, boys and girls listening to me, the main work of the Kenya Police is to maintain uh, law and the order. Law and the order. Uh, yes, of course, we have the National Police Service. The National Police Service was headed by the person by the name the Inspector General. So if you can see this question here, the question was somewhere here. The question was question number 122, saying that in Kenya, the National Police Service, the National Police Service is headed by who? By the Inspector, Inspector General. Then um, the National Police Service was divided into two, into three, I mean. We had the Directorate of Criminal Investigation Department. We have the Kenya Police Service. And the so the Kenya Police Service was under the, inspect the, the, uh, the Deputy Inspector General. Under uh, the Administrative Police, which was under what he called uh, the Kenya Police. So the National Police, the National Police Service, NPS, was under... In Inspector General, whereby we had the uh, Directorate of the Criminal Investigation, we have the Kenya Police and the Adem Administrative Police. Administrative Police. The Kenya Police Service is headed by the Deputy Inspector General. Good. So the National Police Service is under an Inspector General, but the Kenya Police Service is under the Deputy Inspector General. Under the Deputy Inspector. Uh, under the uh, Inspector General. So the question number next. So question number um, 122 in Kenya. The National Police Service is led by who? In Inspector General. But now the Kenya Police Service is under the Deputy Inspector General. The Kenya Defense Forces made up of the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. And we say the Chief of Defense Forces is appointed by the President to be the head of the Kenya Defense Forces. The KDF, they have their own leader. The head of the KDF is known as number 24, the chief of defense. The chief of defense is appointed by the president to head the Kenya Defense Forces. In Kenya, the president is the commander-in-chief, of course, of, uh, of the armed forces. And the president, in this case, is being uh, 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 elected during a general election. Question number 126. The powers of the president to burden convicted criminals who have corrected their behavior in a prison is called prerogative of mercy. The powers of the president to pardon convicted criminals who have uh, corrected their behavior is called prerogative of mercy. The main function of the opposition party is to critic the government all ensure it delivers what it promised the citizens. So in December, 
the northern hemisphere experiences winter while the southern hemisphere experiences summer and is vice versa in the month of june now june the northern part experiences what we call um what we call um jodemanse jodemanse then in march the northern hemisphere experiences spring while the southern hemisphere experiences autumn the vice versa happens in september again i want us to repeat the question number one to indeed i'm sorry because uh uh there's a uh, some disturbance from uh, the, the the highways around him here in december the northern hemisphere experiences winter while the southern part experiences summer and also this vice versa so in june june we experience what you call a summer and a december winter uh during the german colonial rule in tanganyika the title of the african headman was called jumbes the question number 130 during the general colon, the german colonial rule in tanganyika the title of the african headman was called uh, the jumbes well the arab traders were called the akitas so akitas were the arab traders and the jumbes were african headman headman uh, in tanganyika during the colonial period the german rule used what he called direct rule to administer tanganyika from 1885 to 1919 but the british used what he called direct rule to administer tanganyika from 1919 to 1961 of course when tanganyika got independence in 1961 so the german used what he called direct rule to administer tanganyika in 1885 uh, to 1919 the french used the police of assimilation to administer senegal whereby africans were being assimilated the british used what he called indirect rule in northern nigeria northern nigeria and also don't even forget the belgians in congo of the direct rule The main reason for using the indirect rule in northern Nigeria was lack of enough administrators. Northern Nigeria lack of enough administrators. But why they were using assimilation they wanted to reduce what he called the cost of administration. The Portuguese also used assimilation to administer Mozambique and uh, the Portuguese and the French considered her colonies as the overseas province. The French and the Portuguese. The main reason why Ghana did not experience problems of land alienation was the fear of contracting diseases like malaria by the settlers and few men of few few of them came remember Ghana is found in a um, equatorial uh, region whereby the climate is hot and wet and the region uh, do experience a lot of convectional rainfall so the climate in Ghana discouraged much land alienation due to uh, the white men feared of being attacked by these kind of diseases malaria uh, in senegal one who got assimilated was known as assimil assimil the, those members who were being assimilated uh, were known as as uh, assimil in the french in senegal the four communes in senegal the four communes in senegal where assimilation was used we had uh, dakar we have rosifki saint louis and the gori So you can be asked a simple question why assimilation worked very well in fact it was along the coastal region along the coastal region of uh, uh, of Senegal where it worked very well the Dakar Rosfi uh, the Saint Louis and the Gori Belgium uh, in Congo used what you call direct rule direct rule paternalism it is associated by Africans who are considered as, as uh, small kids that you cannot be even console The struggle for Zimbabwe uh, independence in Zimbabwe was local known as the G, uh, the Chimulenga this the Chimulenga war it was the struggle for uh, the struggle for independence in Zimbabwe was lo local known as the Chimulenga war the movement that led Mozambique in the struggle for independence was known as Front for the Liberation of Mozambique Frelimo the movement it is a, not a party it is a movement that led Mozambique in the struggle for independence Uh, we had uh, Frelimo or the front of the liberation of Mozambique the party that led Kenya to independence of course was Kanu in 1960 and remember Kenyatta was not among the founder members of uh, of Kanu when Kanu was being for formed Kenyatta was in a prison the so called the six capenguri of course the party that led Tanganyika into independence on Tanzania was Tanu in 1961 with Mwalimu Nyerere uh, first of being the chief minister then we had the prime minister then later he became the president the party that led Ghana to independence was Convention of People's Party of 1957 the CPP 
and the brothers led Zimbabwe into independence on Zanu in 1980, Zanu of 1980. The brother that successfully led South Africa against a apartheid rule was African National Congress, ANC, of 1994, 1994. And the largest island country, of course, in Africa, Madagascar, was under uh, the French. This one, was, you had said it early enough that the French uh, colonized what you call Madagascar. Then we had the Comoros, we had what you call Mauri, Ma Mauritius, whereby uh, the French who apply were used to, to administer. But the Seychelles, we had the, uh, the British. Um, in Kenya, the National Assembly has 349 plus one speaker who is an ex-official member, making a total of 350. So, in Kenya, the, nas the National Assembly has 350 members, whereby we have added the, the speaker. The speaker is an ex-official member. We have, uh, in Kenya, the Senate has 67 members plus the ex-official member speaker. So, we have 68, 68 members so we have 68. And how does question number 49, how does this members comes? We said we have 290 members elected. We have uh, 47 women reps. We have 12 nominated members. And I told my learners that once you hear the word nomination, nomination goes with political parties in Kenya. Not the president. The president do appoint, but the parties do nominate. Then we have one ex officio member. When you add this one, the 290 plus 47 plus 12 plus 1 gives you 350. Then the Senate, we have um, uh, 47 senators, we have 16 women. And the funny thing under the Senate and the National Assembly, the National Assembly, the 12 members who are nominated by the political parties, it is a mixture of both men, both the gender. But when you go to say the Senate, we have um, uh, 47, 47 elected senators and the 16, of course, women, purely women. We have two youths. We have two members representing members of the of disabled. Then from there we have one ex official member. When you add the sixteen plus uh, forty seven, uh, this is six to what? This is sixty three. Sixty three. When you add the two sixty five, you add the two sixty seven. Then you have you add the speaker. Then the number becomes at sixty eight. The National Assembly. This is what I've said here, yeah? and the Senate. I think I've also said that. The National Assembly consists of uh, 290 elected members from constituencies, 12 nominated by political parties, 47 women elected from all counties, one one per county under the speaker. The National Senate consists of 47 elected senators from all counties, 16 nominated by political parties, and uh, all are women, of course, this is what I was saying. Yeah. Then we have two youths and two representatives of people with disabilities and they speak of course and the main role of the senate is to play an oversight role on the running of the county uh, government and their expenditure so 573 is saying that the main role of the senate is to play an oversight role on the running of the county and the expenditure the main source of revenue for the national government is taxes of course you get access from the national government but again, the main source of revenue for the county government is the grants from the national government. The county government, they cannot stand on their own. They need the support, the greater support from the national government in the form of what you call a grants. Grants is the money that you are not going to return. But it's alone, alone you, you, you return with an interest. But the grants, this is the main source of revenue for the county government. But also the national government, we have taxes as the main source uh, of revenue. So the chief legal advisor of government in Kenya is the attorney general. Attorney general gives what he call legal support to all arms of government plus the president of the cabinet and even the, 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 the executive, judiciary and legislature. The attorney general is appointed by the president sworn in again 